What's going on folks? Simulation for the Nation here. Hope you're doing very well and welcome back to another how-to guide on Farming Simulator 22. Today we are going to look at exactly how you can optimize your farming strategy to achieve the highest yields possibly possible for your crops. In Farming Simulator 22, Giants have made it very easy to be able to invest a lot of time and effort and money into really achieving the best outcome in your fields. Question is, what do you have to do and how do you have to get there? Well, we're going to find out in this video. So do stick around to see exactly how much of an increase you can have when harvesting a field of wheat when you follow all of the procedures required. So we're going to get stuck into it and we're going to find out exactly what that looks like. But to do this, like any good scientific experiment, you do need to have a control, which is exactly what we're doing now. We are harvesting a field on Port Belleron. This is field number 12, which we've just picked up. Uh, it, had, it was empty when we opened into the save game. We drilled a field of wheat there into stubble. We haven't touched it. Apart from that, we've let it grow. As you can see, it is full of weeds and it is very, very low yielding. So this is my default. This is what you can do if you just buy a field and harvest it. This is what you can expect to achieve there. So we're going to compare this exact same field with another save game where we're going to have some wheat grown and we're going to have followed every single step along the way. And we'll find out exactly what that looks like. So this is going to give you the best idea of exactly how much time and effort you need to invest. And also, what do you re uh, what rewards do you reap after doing this? Is it truly worth it? How much can you get? And what kind of profit can you make there? Because after all, if you're going to follow every single step on the way, that requires a lot of equipment, a lot of machinery to do it. So we'll see exactly if it is worth it. Uh, which make sure we get every tiny little piece here. And we will wrap this field up there. As you can see, we've got a combine, we've got a trailer over there as well. Not the biggest field, so it shouldn't take us too long to do, but we're just going to wrap this all out here. We're going to chop the straw on both of them as well, so we're not changing anything there. Uh, but our only difference will be in the next save game we go to, we're going to follow every single step. We'll find out in just a moment there what our benchmark is, and then we're off to start a full series of cultivations. And there you have it. If I don't do anything to my field and field 12 here in Hope Belleron with no other additional fertilizer, weeding, plowing, cultivation, herbicide, or anything like that, we come away with 7,956 liters in the tank here. So let's go and exit that. We'll go and get into our next save game and we'll see what the difference is. So here you have it, folks. We are back in a different save game. You can tell that because this one, unfortunately, has a stubble of sorghum in here. But not to worry. We're going to take the same process anyway. And we're going to get after this and really improve the yield. So let's start. So let's start by having a look at this field. As you can see, it's currently 0% fertilized with also zero weeds in there, which I guess is a good thing. We'll get onto that in a little bit more detail later on. But what we need to do is get, get after this field, really. Let's turn this into a seedbed first and foremost and that's going to take a few steps now in years gone by you could just skip straight through to plowing run a cultivator through there either or even direct drill on top of that and you can still do that now but if you do that you are missing several different steps steps all of which may impact your yield depending upon some of your settings as well so let's take a step back we're going to start by using and implementing a new feature to 22 which is mulching now, mulching will do exactly that. It grinds up all of the, uh, the detritus and the uh, organic matter on the surface there and turns it into a very fine organic matter, which can be incorporated into the soil. Has great uh, nutritional benefits for the soil there and will really help to start a good seed bed off. So we're going to do exactly that. There are many different types of mulches. For speed today, we're going to use a Dablo, which will allow us to get through this field just a little bit faster. Uh, they all have the same impact, all the mulches there. Uh, and they will all ultimately bring the same effect. So uh, we're going to get this ready to go. We're going to be using Hide Worker a lot today just to ensure we get reach our full uh, optimization here, really. And we, we get this all done. So Hide Worker is away. Now, when you are mulching here, you can see a couple of different things. The texture changes. It changes to almost like a cultivated texture, which is good. We want to see that. Uh, despite the type of crop that you're mulching over, you will see that mulching texture there. But crucially, mulching can actually add up to 5% into the yield of your crop, which means that without doing anything else, you're already winning. You're already increasing just exactly how much you're going to be achieving from this one field. It doesn't take too much time to mulch a field over there. The mulcher in this instance isn't too expensive either, so the cost benefit there is going to be huge, especially when you start to extrapolate that out over multiple fields. 
So we're going to let this little mulcher finish here. This guy's going to zip up and down just a few more times. And then we're on with a few extra tasks. So now as our hired man... I'm going to have to move that combine, aren't I? As our hired driver is cracking along with the mulch in here. He is leaving us a little bit of room for us to get moving along behind him. So that is exactly what we will do. Now, what is crucial to measure out here and to ensure that you have enabled or disabled, depending upon the levels of uh, the depth of detail that you want to go to, is whether or not you have periodic plowing enabled. To find out, you can go into Escape. And you come down to your game menus this here there. And you'll see as you come down through into Crops and Growth, periodic plowing required, yes. Now that will mean that every so often you will need to come through and plow your field. It'll tell you when you need to do so when you come into the map here and you turn on needs plowing. If it is a bright red color, then you need to get after it there. So we are going to jump on in with the plow now and we're going to get caught up here. So we will just turn out that plow and again, we'll set hide worker off and away here as well, just to help us speed through this field. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time to get all caught up here with the plow. So we'll have to get going. And then we'll come back and see, once we're all done, what the next steps will be. Alright, so as the plow is going through, you'll see that our roller has finished in the top corner. So this is all nicely mulched down now, which is fantastic. But as the plow goes through, it does introduce another new feature for Farming Simulator 22. And that is stones. And these stones come in all wonderful shapes and sizes. You have large stones, which you're typically going to find when you do a lot of the deeper cultivations, such as plowing or subsoiling. Really rip those up and bring them to the top. And you're going to get smaller stones as well. Those smaller stones aren't quite so much of an issue, but the large ones here, well, they are a bit. And they require a little bit of a different uh, approach. If you have a small stone, it's not really any problem. You can roll those under and they'll be fine. They'll be pressed underground sufficiently enough away from all of the other cultivation equipment not to cause any damage. But with the larger stones, well, then you need to get out a stone collector such as this Elho. And what we're going to do is run this up and down. This is going to collect all the stones behind the roller and leave us in a much tidier position. What this will also do, because of the nature of this machine, it also cultivates over the bed. So it acts as a, a, a two different factors in this growing stage. Now, you can still cultivate after should you want to or if you like to. You, know, you can definitely do that. Uh, in instances such as this, you could use something like a power harrow there. If you don't collect the stones beforehand and if you do power harrow straight behind the plow where the rocks have been pulled up, you do risk further damage in your equipment. So that is something you're going to have to bear in mind. But in this instance, we're going to go on with the fast track, on with the stone picker, and we are going to get some stones sorted out here. So let's start everything up. Stone picker is away. We'll lower it down. And once more, we are off. So we're going to just complete this same field. The plow is surging through this field. Now it won't take too much longer to get that done. And as you can see, we are left with a different texture. And once again, hired work is going to finish this off so we can have a look. We have now a very loose cultivated uh, ground texture here, which is great. This is the next step. We are going to turn this into a bit of a stronger texture. What we're going to do is, first of all, Spread a little bit of lime on here as well, uh, so we can ensure that we get the best texture there. Then we'll cultivate in that lime, and then we're going to create this perfect seed bed with a bit of rolling. And there you have it, folks. With the plowing finished, the stone picker is catching up quickly behind there as well. Now, it's important to notice if you do have periodic plowing enabled, and it's usually every three years or so that you'll need to plow over your land, if you don't do that, then you do risk losing up to 15% of your yield for that year. So it is imperative to keep an eye on when you do need to plow in order to make sure you keep on top of things. Right now, though, we're going to crack on with a little bit of lime spreading here. We're going to spread onto the ground that we've just picked clean of stones. And then we can actually cultivate that back in or roll that back in. And then we're nearly ready to drill this. So we're really cracking along now. I'm going to enable the spreader and you'll be able to see the ground turn a beautiful white color. We'll make sure we get all of this covered uh, and then we'll finish ourselves back off here. There you go. But you can easily see where you've been here. And like I said, the, this is very crucial to really add in that extra uh, up to 15% really with the lime enabled here. So uh, really is a vital piece. What is brilliant as well and what can make this even more cost effective. There are mods out there now which will allow you to turn those rocks into lime. So you don't even have to pay for that lime. So really good cost effective way to... Uh, to pay for itself there to 
it to increase those yields just by using what you're extracting from the field in the first place there which is great all about trying to save outputs uh to really increase that uh, overall revenue here and that's exactly what we're going to do uh with this line uh we will get this all done and then we'll come back to you with the last important stage of creating that seed bed before we get the drill into gear so at this point all of the lime has been spread the field is looking good but we're going to work in that line we're going to incorporate it one more time so we are using the power harrow to do that it's working away very nicely up there now after this we could and we are going to uh, roll this down just to make a nice firm seed bed so what you could really do if you've plowed over the field uh, and you've seen all these rocks appear you can spread the lime at that point because in theory the rock picker with that cultivation effect will give you this same procedure and uh, will give you this same uh cultivated textured seed bed as well so that would in theory reduce one of those jobs out there now in reality quite how well a rock picker is going to cultivate a seed bed remains to be seen but in farm sim that would have saved you at least one more process. I personally do like the more conventional approach to tillage. So I do like to see a power harrow out in the field now and again. Not that I'm not a fan of direct drilling, but just look at that coon power harrow there. That is a thing of beauty. So we're going to let that tick on through. I'm not going to take him too long to finish this field. That will chase him out of the field with the seed bed, with the roller. That firms up the soil, compacts it down a little bit there, allows some of these drills to grip a little bit more and to for the cults to work in there. And it will give us a beautiful looking texture here to finish off with as well. And then we'll be good to go with our final stages of growth. So we'll get this uh, power harrow all finished up and we'll chase him out the field. So he is flying through. He's probably got a few more passes left to go. So we're going to jump on into the McCormick here. Uh, and let's get this all unfolded out. We'll drive ourselves forward. We can now finish this process off here and then we'll be on to drilling as well. Uh, beautiful set of rollers by Dablo. They really are stunning. They leave a fantastic texture in my opinion. As we lower that down, uh, we will get away. Now, as you can see behind me here, it's leaving a lovely ridge type uh, seed bed. The drill will come flying into this after it. And then that is us going, uh, good to go. Now, rolling is always something that I would strongly encourage you to do because you do stand to gain up to 5% yield increase every time you do so. So it is strongly worth it. And again, if you maximize that out and expand that out across all of your, uh, your fields or even just one large field, that 5% can equal a significant amount of uh, increase in your returns. So it's definitely something that we should always be looking to do there. I really feel this is uh, something that because the size of the rollers as well are so significant that it does not take too long to do. Now, if you're just farming grass, if you're just looking to get uh, your fodder crops off here for your animals, as we jump out, we'll let this go. Then rolling is something that you can equally continue to do there as well, because there are grass rollers specifically to enable you to increase that yield. You'll notice down below as we have a lovely looking seed bed ready to go here. And the rollers are still ticking along. I expect that power harrow will be done shortly. But what we can do is get onto the good stuff here. We'll get this drill ready to go on the John Deere. And then after that, really, all we need to worry about is crop protection and future fertilization. As you can see, we have a crop of wheat in the back of the Valestad here, which is exactly what we want to see. We are planting wheat to control and uh, to compare it to our control earlier on. Uh, and this won't take us too long to do either. We're going to pull up to about there. Fire up the drill, lower down, and we are away. Perfect. So I want to make sure I just overlap that edge ever so slightly so we can guarantee we cover all of the field space because that's exactly what we need to do here. Uh, and this will be done. After that, then, really what we need to think about is are we going to put any pre-emergent weed uh, herbicide down? Something that I always want to do there. Just on the off chance that we do have weeds coming through, that will cover us in that instance. Uh, secondly as well when are we going to fertilize i would always say you you can put your first stage of fertilization down of which there are two with spraying you can put that first one down uh, straight away after spraying so we may well just look to do that uh, right now though we will just continue here with our drilling you can see we're all three machines going there i am going to let hired worker continue to drill this through one thing i would say and one thing which is a little bit challenging after you rolled is the seedbed texture once you finish drilling there and before you can just see there is a very very finite difference there but in some lighting conditions it's not the easiest thing to detect so you do have to be on it there and you have to make sure you can see it now obviously you have ridge markers and then hopefully later on down the line we will see gps coming on in but some of the drills don't have ridge markers there so it is a little bit challenging 
So there is definitely a definition there between the drilled and the seed bed. Okay, and folks, we have finished off our rolling. The drill is nearly done. We're going to put our first stage of fertilizer down here. Now, you do get, if we look at our map here and show the yield or oh, our different stages, there are two different stages of fertilization there. There's a lighter blue and a darker blue there. So we want to make sure that we hit both of those. And you have to, to ensure that you achieve your highest yield. These can be worth in excess of 20% each. So you really want to make sure you do this. Otherwise, your yields... The crops are going to be very very poorly yielding so i uh, want to really make sure you hit those one thing to consider as well if you have crop destruction enabled when the crops have grown to ensure that you have row crops on such as this tractor here so you do not damage the the ground there and therefore lose any crop in the future if you have these on then you will be fine the same goes of course if you are looking to uh, spray any herbicide uh, as you can see now though you can see a definitive change in the soil texture as we drive across here so you know where you've sprayed nice and easy to put this first stage on now when there is no uh no uh, foliage on the floor and when we haven't reached our, our tillering stage for the plant there so you can easily see where you've been and where you need to go uh, but yeah like i say it's always an easy thing to do we're just going to continue around here uh, we will get all of this covered nice and quickly that 24 meter uh, drill really doesn't take too long uh, let's just Pull ourselves back up to reach right onto the end there, and then we'll be away. Now, again, at some point, now, if we do get GPS, then this will be even easier to ensure that you cover every single uh, square centimeter of ground. But for right now, this is a very straightforward, simple approach to ensuring that we finish it all off there. Uh, once this is done, we're going to start to speed up time a little bit because we need to go through our grown stages uh, and we'll have to make sure that we do at least one more coverage of fertilizer and also keep an eye on those weeds. We will be looking to try and make sure that we've, if we do have any weeds, which I've got a strong feeling we are going to see, knowing my luck, that we have our herbicide applied before the last day before harvest. If their weeds are there during harvest, then we will not be able to remove them and we are going to suffer as a result of that. But our drill is now finished. We're going to get rid of the drill. We'll finish off the spraying and then I'm going to fast forward today. All right, folks, October is coming around and we're already looking really, really good. Now we do have the slightly increased crop textures here. So the crop does look at that a little bit thicker. Uh, there's another video on my channel as to how you can do that one. But You'll see in the bottom right corner, we're at 52% fertilized already. No weeds, which is fantastic to see there. And as you look across there, that looks to be the case for the whole of the field. So hopefully that will stay the same. We're going to just do one more application of fertilizer now. And then we'll grow and move on into November and December. And as you can see, as we walk on through January here, the crop is still looking fantastic there. Fully fertilized now, 100% through, and not a weed to be seen. We're going to keep looking to March and April as we get into spring there to see if we are going to be likely to be hit by any weeds. Uh, we'll have a quick look at our crop calendar here. And it does look like for wheat, we're going to be looking to try and harvest this in July at the earliest. There, So we're going to try and do that in July as long as it's ready to go, which means that by... Uh, the very latest, I want to make sure that by June, we have this sprayed off for any weeds. But for now, we're just going to speed through time. All right then, folks, we are in June. And again, still no weeds and what looks like a very large crop. You can see there are some right on the border's edge here. And this field has been obliterated by them. But nothing over here. So we're looking really, really good there. We're going to fast forward into July where all being well. The combine will be coming out and just like that ladies and gentlemen it is now harvest time so we aren't going to waste any time here at all we're going to jump into our combine which has been waiting here patiently for us to get going and we're ready to attack this field now we know that we've got the control from earlier on we know what that looks like and that we are ready to to see really what this looks like in comparison here so we're just going to get stuck after it now i'm hoping that what we should be able to see is that this can considerably fills up that truck over there but let's find out this is where the, the the hard work and your your efforts really comes into fruition so what we're going to make sure is that we get this all harvested hide uh, worker is going to fire away uh, we are going to get this done nice and quickly here we're chopping the straw not that it really makes any difference to our end goal but we will see anyway we'll come back to you in just a few minutes here when this is all done and dusted there for our final reveal well, folks, in my excitement, I nearly got carried away and missed the whole day. I kept the speed on a little bit too quickly. But you will see 
we are at over 84% capacity on our grain tank here, which I know we didn't get to in the previous time around there. So that already shows us that we're looking really, really good. So I can't wait to see exactly what this is going to look like for us. Uh, we are using hide work here just so we can get this all finished off nice and consistently and efficiently. Don't want to miss any bits and pieces here. I haven't got my wheel set up at the moment, so if I do use a uh, keyboard, I will probably miss bits and force ourselves to come back. However, look at that 88% there. This is showing already that with a pass and a half left to go, we are we're in the money really here. And the great thing to think about is this is just on one small field. If you've been successful enough to build up a large number of fields, just think about where this can take you to. So this could be a really, really huge step up there if you follow all those steps that we've gone through today. And what we're going to have to do right about now is go and empty this out, I think, because we're not going to make it down. We've got 2% of the capacity left in the grain tank here. So we'll empty this out. We'll finish that up there and we'll show you exactly what we have left in the in the tr uh, truck and trailer when we're all done. So, folks, we have finished. The harvest has been complete. The combine is ready to be parked up there and the truck is carrying quite a load forget about the sorghum in the bottom there we're currently carrying 11,367 liters of wheat now if you compare that to what we had at the very beginning of the video there i'll put a little screenshot up now we were carrying 7,956 liters which frankly is quite an alarming difference which in fact when you put that into percentages that is 42 percent extra which is incredible so there you see from all of the work that we've completed today you can gain up to 42 percent extra of your product now let's put that into a monetary value the difference in the the tonnage from one field uh, prior to having any form of fertilizer or additional work to this field is 3411 liters or 3.4 tons now, if we look into our menu and we'll have a look at our current prices for wheat as it stands right now, you'll be looking at selling it via the train for the top price of $499 per 1,000. So, let's look into that. We're going to go 3.41 times 499, which equals $1,701 pounds or euros, which is frankly quite incredible. So, there you go. That is how you can make your farm a lot of money by maximizing your yield. If you extrapolate that out across all of your fields, you're really going to be on to a winner. I do hope you have enjoyed this guide there. It took quite a bit of work in to get everything doing. So if you did enjoy it, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and we will see you all in the next one. I have been Simulation for the Nation. Until then, do stay safe. Enjoy what you're doing as always. And we'll see you later.